16 and starting from verse 10. So the first book of Samuel, chapter 16, verse 10. And you'll see why I've, why I've chosen this, these particular verses. And here we have Samuel visiting the home of Jesse. And it starts off and he says again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all your children? And he said, No, there remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will, for we will not sit down till he come hither. Verse 12, And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with all of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. Samuel anointed David to become king of Israel. But what was he doing prior to that? He was a young shepherd boy. And as a shepherd, many valuable traits were learnt in preparing David for the task ahead. A shepherd, what type of CV would a shepherd boy have? And I've taken some of my particular references from the spirit of prophecy out of the book of the Desire of Ages. And it says, of all creatures, the sheep is one of the most timid and helpless. And in the east, the shepherd's care for his flock is untiring and unceasing. Anciently as now, there was little security outside of the walled towns. Marauders from the uh, roving border tribes or beast of prey and their hiding place in the rocks lay in wait to plunder the flocks. The shepherd always have to, had to be alert. He watched his charge knowing that it was at the peril also of his own life. Even Jacob also records how it was when he was looking after the flocks for Laban in the pasture grounds of Haran. Describing his own unwearied labour, said as recorded in the book of Genesis 31:40, he says, In the day the drought consumed me and the frost by night, and my sleep depart departed from my eyes. The shepherd spent hours caring for the sheep in his care. It was not an eight-hour job and then home to a warm meal in a cosy bed. No, he spent the whole day and week with his sheep 24-7. Through the heat of the day and the cold at night, and we know that in the east and the desert, how cold it can get. Not something that many young pe person would want to engage in or as a career challenge. And it was while guarding his father's sheep that the boy David, single-handed, encountered the lion and the bear and rescued from their teeth the stolen land or the lost sheep. The only weapon that David had in his, in his hand was his staff and his slingshot. As the shepherd leads his flock over the rocky hills, through forest and wild ravines, to grassy nooks by the riverside, as he watches them on the mountains through the lonely night, shielding them from robbers, caring tenderly for the sick and the feeble, his life comes to be one with theirs. A strong and tender attachment unites him to the object of his care. It doesn't matter how large the flock is, the shepherd knows every sheep. Every one has its name and responds to the name at the shepherd's call. As an earthly shepherd knows his sheep, so does the divine shepherd know his flock that are scattered throughout the world. Ye, my flock, the flock of my pastures are men, and I am your God, says the Lord God. Jesus says, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. I have graven thee upon the palms of my hand, Ezekiel 34, 31. Jesus knows us individually and has touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He knows us all by name. He knows the very house in which we live. 
the name of each occupant. He has at time given direction to his servants to go to a certain street in a certain city, to such a house to find one of his lost sheep. Every soul is as fully known to Jesus as if he were the only one for whom the Saviour died. The distress of every one touches the shepherd's heart. The cry for aid reaches his, his ear. Your cry reaches his ear. He came to draw all men unto himself. He bids them follow me. And his spirit moves upon their hearts to draw them to come to him. Many refuse to be drawn, but Jesus knows who they are. He also knows who gladly hears his call and are ready to come under his pastoral care. He says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. He cares for each one as if there were not another one on the face of the earth. Jesus, the shepherd, the G, the Jew, to follow him. Follow me, he bids. Let his spirit work on your heart today. The shepherd leads the way when he putteth forth his own sheep. He goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. John 10, verse 4. Did you know that the voice of your shepherd, or are you listening to the wolf in sheep's clothing? The true shepherd calls for the voice of truth. The eastern shepherd does not drive his sheep. He depends not upon force or fear, but going before he calls them. They know his voice and obey the call. So does the Saviour shepherd with his sheep. The scripture says, Thou leadest thy people like a flock by the hand of Aaron and Moses. Through the prophet Jesus declares, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. He compels none to follow him. He says, I drew them. He says, with cords of a man, with bands of love, as written in Psalm 77, verse 20. It is not the fear of punishment or the hope of everlasting reward that leads the disciples of Christ to follow him. They behold the Saviour's matchless love revealed throughout his pilgrimage on earth from the manger in Bethlehem to the cross of Calvary. And the sight of him, the sight of him attracts, it softens and subdues the soul. Love awakens in the heart of the beholders. They hear his voice and they follow him. As the shepherd goes before his sheep, himself first encountering the perils of the way, so does Jesus with his people. When he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, he goeth before you. The way, the way to heaven is consecrated by the Saviour's footprints. The path may be steep and rugged, but Jesus has travelled that way before us. His feet have pressed down the cruel thorns of life, to make the pathway easier for us. Every burden that we are called to bear, he himself has borne. Though now he has ascended to the presence of God and shares the throne of the universe, Jesus has lost none of his compassionate nature. Today the same tender sympathizing her heart is open to all the woes of humanity. Today, the hand that was pierced is reached for to bless more abundantly his people that are in the world. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Brothers and sisters, we are imprinted on the palm of the hand of our Saviour Jesus Christ, and no one can take us out of there. The only way we can get out of the palm of Jesus' hands today is if we step out ourselves. The soul that he has given himself to Christ is more precious in his sight than the whole world. The Saviour would have passed through the agony of Calvary that one might be saved in his kingdom. He will never abandon one for whom he has died. 
Unless his followers choose to leave him, he will hold them fast. Through all of our trials, we are never failing. Sorry, we have a never failing helper. He does not leave us alone to struggle with temptation, to battle with evil, and be finally crushed with burdens and sorrow. Though now he is hidden from mortal sight, the ear, the ear of the Saviour of faith, can hear his voice saying, Fear not, for I am with you. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. David, as he grew and meditated on the word of God, he paralleled his life to that of a shepherd, to the life and title of Jesus. As he penned the 23rd Psalm and drew on his role and experience as a shepherd, he too saw the mirror image of Christ as our shepherd. I find it amazing that a lot of the time, the psalm, the 23rd psalm, is mainly used or read at funerals. But when you look at it, and as recited from Brian this morning, it is a beautiful daily prayer. Let's turn to the, to the book of Psalms, to Psalm 23. Psalm 23, starting from verse 1. And it simply says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. There's no arguments here. He is my shepherd today. John 10, 11 goes on to say, The good shepherd, give a good shepherd sorry, giveth his life for the sheep. I shall not want. What else? would I desire? What else would I desire? And even over in Psalm 27, verse 4, um, and this is a really comforting verse, and some of you who've heard the pastor read this prior, one thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. David, the king of Israel, had everything that he could possibly want, and yet he states here in Psalms 1 that there is one thing that I desire, and that is to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Is that our prayer this morning? Is that the prayer of every individual here this morning, that we too would like to dwell in the house of the Lord, one thing forever? Turning back to the Psalm 23, it says, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside still waters. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. In Ezekiel 34, 14, it says, I will feed them in a good pasture and upon the high mountains. Of Israel shall their fold be, and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down says the Lord. He leadeth him, he leadeth me beside the still waters, the quiet waters. You know, when a sheep or a lamb comes to a river and it's turbulent, they don't go near it, they don't drink of it. Because there is the possibility that the wool, if it's long, will be caught in the water and they will be taken away. Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become, a, will become in them a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. Verse 3, He restoreth my soul, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He restoreth my soul. When we are weary and tired, he restores us, and we can glory in his name because he leads us into all righteousness. Verse 4, Ye, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. For if I am sick, sorry, ye, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. For if I am sick or I am injured, 
and the shadow of death does fall upon me. Why should I fear any evil? As your rod did lift a lamb out of a hole or guide another that had gone astray, his hand is not too short to save. His spirit comforts me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. You, Lord, provide all that I need and help me before those who did not like me. You anointed my head with oil. You have set me aside and called me by equipping me with the spiritual gifts I need to follow you and to uh, uplift your church. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. You have promised and you are faithful. I have every blessing I need, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What a prayer. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That promise starts today. You know, the 90 and 9 sheep that are left in the wilderness and search is instituted for the one that has gone astray. When the lost sheep is found, the shepherd elevates it to his shoulders and returns with rejoicing. He does not return murmuring and censuring the poor lost sheep, no, for having made him so much trouble, but his return with the burden of the sheep is with rejoicing. And a still greater demonstration of joy is demanded. Friends and neighbours are called to rejoice with the finder, for I have found my sheep which was lost. The finding was the theme of rejoicing. The strain, sorry, the strain was not dwelt upon, for the joy of finding overbalanced the sorrow of the loss and the care, the perplexity and the peril incurred in searching for the lost sheep and restoring it to safety. I say unto you that likewise joy will be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. More than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. Jesus has given us the parable of the lost sheep for our study. The true shepherd leaves the 99 and goes into the desert at any expense and suffering to himself. How many, how many of the wandering and lost sheep have you sought for and brought back to the fold with a heart full of pity, tenderness, forgiveness and love? How many words of encouragement have you spoken to the wandering sheep that have cost you pain, anxiety and much inconvenience? Have you spoken soothing words of hope, courage and pardon, bearing the wandering home on your shoulders, rejoicing at every step and saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. We are to study the life and character of Christ and seek to imitate his example every day. The, unsec sorry, the unconsecrated course of some of those who claim to be believers in the third angel's message has resulted in driving, unfortunately, some of the poor sheep into the desert. And who is it that was manifested, has, oh, sorry, who is it that has manifested the shepherd's care for the lost and wandering? It is time to be Christians and practice as well as profession. What benevolence, what compassion, what tender sympathy Jesus has manifested toward suffering humanity. The heart that beats in unison with this great heart of infinite love will give sympathy, sympathy sorry, to every needy soul and will make it manifest that he has the mind of Christ. Every suffering soul has a claim upon the sympathy of others and those who are filled with the love of Christ, filled with his pity, tenderness and compassion will respond to every appeal to their sympathy. Every soul who attempts to retrace his wanderings and return to God needs the help of those who have a tender, pitying heart 
of Christ-like love. Brothers and sisters, as we come together this Easter weekend, may we never forget that the great shepherd also became the lamb. Without spot, without blemish, and without a word before his accusers, he became the true Passover lamb. A better sacrifice than all those that were offered prior to Calvary. We are not left alone as a flock that are wandering through the desert or of life, absent of calling in of direction, sorry. No, we have a great shepherd, the rock of Israel. This morning I'd like to ask you, if you warmly await what our mural depicts, if you warmly await the second coming and every day you want to be ready, please stand with me this morning. Today, if you want to take hold of the shepherd's hand and say thank you for becoming the lamb, please stand. As we this Easter weekend again contemplate the blood that was shed for the forgiveness of our sins, Remember his body that was battered and bruised, pierced and hung on a cross for you and for me. Please stand. In remembrance and grateful hearts, please stand. If you want to accept and recommit your life to Jesus as the shepherd of your life, please stand with me this morning and let us sing our last song. Dearest Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for that wonderful sacrifice that you've given us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, the biggest price in the universe has been paid for each one of us. And Lord, for all our families and friends and for those that exist in the world that do not know you. Father, give us the strength and the patience, Lord, to be um, your witness this week, to take every opportunity, Lord, that comes our way to tell them of your wonderful love and of your soon coming. Father, we thank you that Jesus is the great shepherd. He leads us, he guides us, and he comforts us each day. For this we're truly thankful. Lord, we pray that your spirit will be upon him, each and every one of us here today as we go our way into this new week. In Jesus' name we thank you and praise thee. Amen.